impingement damage, um, it, it's more prevalent with abrasive material, and it's more prevalent in the center of the belt. The photograph that you see on the right shows an example of a belt that's got significant impingement damage. Most facilities that have impingement damage just think that impingement damage is typical wear. But as with most of the problems that we see with belting, it may not be wear, it may be damage. The difference is that damage can be prevented. And impingement typically is damage rather than wear. Let me share more with you here on impingement damage. Impingement damage typically happens from abrasive material rotating on the surface of the belt. As, a, as, as belt A delivers its cargo to belt B, as that cargo is in a free fall through that load zone or through that chute work, that cargo, as it lands on the receiving belt of, of belt B, it rotates, it slides, it moves as it settles onto the receiving belt. That process, that abrasiveness, is causing what we call impingement damage. Here's how impingement damage can be prevented. If I was going to drop material straight down onto this belt, as it comes onto belt B, we'll call this B, it's settling, it's rotating, and it's causing impingement damage. Another practice, what we've seen some of some larger mining operations do is let that material approach at what we call a grazing angle. As that material settles on that belt at a grazing angle, it's less likely to cause that impingement damage or that impingement damage may not be significant. Now, when you do this, You've got to be concerned about material building up on here. And in some cases, we've had facilities add blasters on here to prevent that buildup, add blasters here as well to prevent that buildup, but continue to deliver that material at this grazing angle. Another practice, if you can't redesign your chute, another practice might be to let that material drop straight down and install what we would call a kicker plate at an angle. That kicker plate would then allow that material to strike that surface and be knocked in the direction of belt travel, reducing that impingement damage. So don't satisfy for belts that are wearing prematurely if it's indeed impingement damage. Impingement damage can save a facility millions of dollars over the year, and it should be and can be prevented. How do we avert impingement damage in a reversible conveyor? Great question. It's very difficult. Uh, you want to bring your load as close to the load point as possible. So if you if this belt travels in both directions. You could put a diverter gate in here where material, if it's going this way, goes like that, and then slide that out this way, and then change it out with a flop gate or a diverter plate that might slide out that way. That's a complex situation in those reversing belts. There's not a whole lot you can do. You might be living with a bit of impingement damage.